So I have this little tradition I like to do at the end of each year. I make a cup of coffee or tea and sit down by the fire and just spend a few minutes mapping out the coming year. I like to write down my goals, my plans, my dreams, and all the projects that we want to do on our homestead. So partially I do this because it just feels good to have a plan, but even more than that, I realize that just the tiniest bit of forethought can end up saving us a big chunk of cash in our homestead budget. And with all the crazy rising prices right now, it feels more important than ever to be paying attention to all of the potential money leaks. So if you're feeling the budget pinch right now, and I know a lot of you are, I wanna share the top four ways that planning ahead saves us big money around our homestead. So the first thing I like to do this time of year is to organize and inventory my garden seeds. So not only is January or sometimes December when I order new seeds, but I found that it's really easy to overbuy seeds that I might not need or think that I need more of a certain variety and then realize I actually had quite a bit in my stash. Now it's not always the end of the world, but seeds don't always last forever and so it's a shame to buy seeds and spend money on varieties you don't need while you have ones that are potentially going stale in your seed container. So I spend a little bit of time going through what I have, remembering what worked for me in the garden this past year or maybe what I didn't like, and then placing those new orders to fill in the gaps of my collection. Okay, so to break down those prices, let's say a pack of seeds is three bucks on average. If my planning prevents me from wasting, let's say 10 packs a year, or overbuying 10 packs a year, that's $30 that I've saved. The next thing I like to do, and this really doesn't take much time, but it can make a huge difference in my coming spring and summer, is just to write down and map out all of my homestead spring deadlines. And by deadlines, I mean when the cows are gonna calve, especially the milk cows, because once they calve, everything in our life changes. Um, if we have goats, when they're going to kid, I need to write down when I'm gonna start my seedlings. You know, I have seedlings that often need extra time like onions or tomatoes or peppers. So I write those dates down. And then also the more later in the season seedlings like cabbages or um, squash. And then I also like to write down when I plan to buy replacement chicks if any, uh, because those dates always sneak up on me. And it might seem a little bit redundant this time of the year when you know, you're sitting by the fire and it's dark and cozy and all you can think about is spring and it might feel like you're never gonna forget um, when to start the seeds or buy the chicks because you're so excited. But I have found from personal experience time and time again that if I don't write it down, you know, the momentum of the year only picks up as we move into the warmer months. And I have forgotten when the goats are gonna kid. I have forgotten to get the chicks in time. I have forgotten to buy my seeds or start my seeds in a timely manner. And often when you do, you pay a premium uh, at the back end for buying chicks late or having to buy vegetable starts because you couldn't start your own. So here's an example. If I buy 10 chicks when they're in feed stores, I'll probably pay about four bucks a chick. However, if I miss the window and decide I need older chickens later so I have eggs, I'm gonna pay at least $20 for a pullet or a young hen. So doing the math, that means I'll save about $160 just by planning ahead and getting chicks when they're in the store. Or how about seedlings? If I'm starting 10 tomato plants myself, that maybe will cost me 50 cents each. And that's on the high end. But if I'm buying the seedlings at the store, I'm gonna pay easily four bucks a pop. So do the math. Starting 10 tomato seedlings, I can save $35 at least. Another thing that has a potential to save a lot of money around the homestead is a little bit of menu planning. Now, if you've listened to my podcast, you know that I am not a hardcore menu planner. Uh, I just can't do the complicated systems. But I have found that just the tiniest bit of forethought makes a huge difference in our daily eating patterns. And when I don't plan ahead or have maybe a roast or a chicken pulled out of the freezer ahead of time, we are way more tempted to eat fast food when we're in town or we just eat kind of junky things at night. I've also found it to be extremely important to keep inventories of what I have in my freezers and my pantries and my cupboards. Um, there's oftentimes such a buildup of ingredients that we accidentally buy and then forget about that they end up going bad or going stale and that's just throwing money in the trash. So keeping a running tally of what I have, especially in the freezer, because I don't know about you, but freezers can be a deep, dark hole at my house and I just forget what's at the bottom. Um, that helps me use up the food when it's at its freshest and not overbuy and then end up throwing things away. So here's a little breakdown on the food. 
it costs our family of five about $60 to eat out at a restaurant. Now contrast that with our average home cooked meal, I'd say that costs us about $15, give or take. That's a difference of 45 bucks. So if even just a little menu planning prevents us from eating out just one time per week, that's a savings of over $2,200 over the course of a year. That's pretty crazy. And the last thing I like to do this time of year, usually after the holidays when all that stress is done and over with, is I like to spend just an hour or two project planning for the year. I love the feeling of possibility in the air this time of year. There's so much potential and so many ideas and sometimes it can feel a little bit overwhelming. What are you going to do first? You know, you have 365 days ahead of you. Um, how are you going to fit everything you want to do in? And so I just like to map it out. I start by brain dumping everything I've been thinking about, everything that's been swirling around in my mind, the ideas I've received from books or the internet or social media. I just write it down and then I spend just a few minutes organizing it, mapping it out by which projects will happen first, which ones can happen in the winter or the spring or the summer. And doing this not only makes me feel less overwhelmed, it gives me the confidence that I know I'm going to be moving my homestead goals forward in the upcoming year. And when I know what we're going to be doing in each season, it gives me the opportunity to buy materials or supplies when they're on sale, to pre-order in time so I'm not paying a premium or rush shipping, to get them in bulk, etc. So once again, just that little bit of planning can end up not only giving you that peace of mind, but also saving you some cold, hard cash in the process. So with this final point, it's a little tough to do a breakdown with the numbers because it depends on what our projects are and what materials we might be buying. But even if we don't include any of these numbers in our final tally, we still stand to save at least $2,400 per year with just the tiniest bit of planning around our homestead. So there are lots of different ways to keep track of all the numbers that we talked about in this video. Personally, I operate best when I write things down on paper instead of my phone, but you know, everybody's different. However, over the years, I have really struggled to find a planner or a calendar that fits our unique old fashioned life. So I made my own. It's the old fashioned on purpose planner and it is for homesteaders by homesteaders, regardless if your homestead is in your backyard in the city or on a hundred acre spread. In addition to the usual weekly and monthly layouts, it also includes room for all of your old fashioned plans, everything from seeds to gardens, to meals, preservation, pantry and freezer inventories, animal and vet records, and tons more. You can grab your own copy for 2023 over at prairieplanner.com.